And we knew that people wanted to have access. And I wanted to give them, and the mall was the way to do it. So I tried to get in the mall. No, and things don't happen overnight. Don't let people deter you if there's something that you want to do. You know, even if you don't have deep pockets, you make up your mind, you'll sacrifice. They promised me the first floor in Green Acres Mall in Valley Streams, a very prestigious mall. They were renovating the mall, and at, let's say at the end of three years, they said, uh, you know, we changed new management, Miss Moore, so there's really no room right now. We can revisit the situation. I had made up my mind I was going to do this. I wanted to break a color barrier. I wanted to make a footprint. So they said, we can give you the second floor. The second floor was a food court. I made a joke out of it. Lipsticks and French fries, you know. And to be really honest, the food court, the room they gave me, the food court, because they, they, they had made up their mind there was no room for me, I took the bathroom of a very big, big store. I mirrored the entire store. Matter of fact, it's in one of the video. I mirrored the entire store. And I stayed up there for 10 years on the second floor. After the 10 years, it was very difficult too. After the 10 years, we renegotiated and I came down for the first floor. And uh, we were in Green Acres Mall for 25 years, but I mortgaged my home to do that. And then we went into King's Plaza Mall, Queen Center Mall licensing agreements. And I had a big opportunity, another big opportunity to get into Dwayne Reed. Um, Dwayne Reed was starting a new initiative, their, their new sort of uh, standard of beauty. They wanted to upscale their store. So this wasn't in mass market. Inside Dwayne Reed's store, there was a section called the Look Boutique, like a store within the store. And that was where they wanted the different price points for products. So that's what we were in those stores. Only the look boutiques, not mass market. So I think that's fast forward up until now. Some other things that we're doing. Dwayne, we just closed 200 stores. So that affected us tremendously. But you know, you don't let anything deter you if you really want to do it. You love it. And uh, we've pivoted. Now we're online, viramorecosmetics.com. And we're working on some other things, some other opportunities right now. So that's the story. Wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I, I just heard some key things that uh, you shared and um, I'd like to share them. Uh, you talked about relationship mm -hmm. and you moving on to, to oh, yeah. you know, the next level, which is so important. And many times in the society that we live in, it seems as if um, people don't really know about relationships. How did you build those relationships, Vera? Well, you know, you have to extend yourself and be courteous. And then you go to events and you meet people. You do the networking. You say it's just how you act to make people aware of who you are. You know, and then when you build that relation, you get to meet people. You know, like I, I, like I said, for example, with Mel. Okay, you're going to go all the way back up to Broadway. You know you're going to be late. I said, I know, Mel. All right, so we'll, we'll, we'll do it after 5. Suppose I'd say, well, no, I'm supposed to get off at 5 o'clock. He didn't have to let me go. Or he didn't have to let me go. And I come back an hour and a half late or I come in early. That's a relationship, a give and take. It's, an, it's really a negotiation, sort of speak. You know, I help you, you help me. But sometimes you don't even have to be helped. You do it because it's a good thing to do. People begin to like you. Building a relationship. You have to get the trust from somebody. Even when you're selling a product, you have to make it aware. They like you. Then you build a relationship. And that leads to something else. It's extremely important as a relationship. I think it's even more important than a talent. Because uh, yes, you can always learn something. Attitude is bad. I don't care how talented you are. I, I don't want you. They don't want you. And, you know, I think that relationship is so key. Connecting, that connect. Definitely. You talked about um, do more than what is expected. So your last name is Moore. <laughs> you did more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, you know what? I guess if you really like something, it's not a job. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you do things because you like it. For example, let's say hypothetically, I'm going to say, oh, wait, who's this young lady that I'm looking at right on top of me? I don't see a name. Felicia or Jacqueline? Oh, no. Who are you, Jacqueline or Felicia? Felicia's mic, Felicia's uh, camera's on. Hi, well, Fel let's say Felicia's supposed to leave at five o'clock. 
come downstairs at six. Oh my God, Felicia, you're still here? I was like, I know, I know, I know, but I wanted to finish this. I wanted to, you know, I know it's due tomorrow morning at, at three o'clock, so I wanted to do this. Well, that makes you feel great. It makes her feel great. So just doing just barely enough doesn't really build a relationship. You know what I'm saying? And you have to like what you're doing. Ooh, that, that, so it doesn't even really, it's not really a job. You just love it. You know, your creativity, your creativity comes out. Your juice is coming. Oh my God, it's eight o'clock. I didn't know I was here that late. This, I got into it. It's fabulous. It's very important. But I can't give that to you. That has to be an innate part of you. I can't make you do more. You know, I can't make, it has to be part of your DNA. You want to because this is what you love. It's, you know, it's not a task. You all feel as though it's an opportunity. And you love the challenge. Great, great, great. Good. You also said, I'm very, you had a plan. Mm -hmm. So you plan to work for the government for five years. Right. Yeah. So have, have you found that um, you planned to succeed? Was that in you? Just, I plan to do this. I plan oh, to absolutely. succeed. You have to be radical. You have to plan to succeed. You can, you just can't say, what's that cliche? They say, if you plan to fail, you fail to plan. Listen, seriously, you can make up your mind that you want to do something. No, but it's all about the mindset. You have to say to yourself, no matter what, I'm going to do this. No matter what it takes, I'm going to do this. If I have to sacrifice, I want to do this. And I've done many, many, many sacrifices. I remember when I was in the theater, I didn't have the money to go and buy music. I used to go to Paddleson's. That was a music store in 50 Get them seven, take the music, Xerox it, bring it back, because I couldn't afford to buy all that music when I was studying opera. You have to have a plan that I'm going to do a certain, and a time. You have to set a time as to, to hopefully, well, timing you have to be very realistic, but don't set unrealistic goals, because then you get a little, you know. But you make a plan, you know, this is what I want to do. And you take steps. And sometimes your plan changes, but you have to have some sort of plan. You know, you just can't be out there. And you have to be strategic. You know, you know, Mr. Rob is the director of Pearly Victorious. Who wants to go to my uh, to, to California and sing on the Leslie Elman show? Well, I said, you know what? That's an opportunity. Maybe I'll do that. You know, went out to California. I wasn't going out. I was by myself, but it was I was surrounded with people that I knew. I knew Mr. Roberts for five years. I knew his wife. You know, it was, it was great. So that was a strategic plan for me to do that. You know, and then I've got homesick and I won't come back home. But at least I had built a relationship out there. And I kept that relationship going. So I think everything is a plan. You know, to scale up, you got to have a plan. Yes, so true. Thank you so much. I'm going to open this up for the students. So um, I know they wrote down some questions. So who would, who would, ever, who would like to go first? Um, whoever would like to go first, please open up your mic and uh, ask your question. Hello. Hi. I don't see anybody, but hello. I don't see hello. the person. Can you open up your camera? I can't right now. I apologize. Okay. Am I talking to Miles? Hi, Vera. How are you doing today? Am I talking to Miles? Yeah, this is Miles. Yeah. I'm really good. Thank you for asking. Good, 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 uh, good. Glad to hear you. Quick question, but it might be uh, a little loaded. I was just curious. Um, uh, could you do, like kind of talk on and discuss the toxicity within the cosmetic industry? Yeah, well, working on it. Everybody, in this course, now everybody has um, everything. Everybody wants it to be clean beauty, sustainable beauty, and I agree with that. And I think they're now people are looking at the cosmetic industries, and there are going to be laws to change that. So we're all working on that diligently. Believe me. There, well, you know, colors and dyes and paraffins. So we're all working on it. that's that's the answer to it. we are working on it, and you will see a change. Did that help you? Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for asking, Alessandra. Any good relationships? So I was just. Why do you think you landed your in the acting industry? And that you had a good relationship with the director or the producer? 
that really it was breaking up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I have bad connection because there's okay. Let me now I'm going to be louder so maybe I can hear you better. But we were breaking up. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Hear. Let's go ahead. Okay, so since you mentioned having good relationships, why do you think you landed your first role in the acting industry? I'm going to repeat it because I don't know if I heard you said you had a good relationship with the director or who? The or like the people who were casting you? How did I get my role? Is that what you're saying? She's saying, did you have a good relationship with the people who were casting you? No. Look, from early victorious. I worked then. He knew that there was something going on in California, you know, uh, so I took it. He was going to be the director. We had built a relationship. I've been working on Pearly over four years. But I think you don't know the people that are casting you. I mean, sometimes you do, but I didn't. Most of the times you don't. You have to hone your skills and be ready. So then when you're an agent or you get an opportunity, whether you have an agent or not, whether it's an open call, as they, it's an open call when you're not in the union, or whether a closed call, you read it in a magazine, come audition for such and such and such and such. You don't know who they are. So when you go in there, you have to be skilled. You have to do your job. You know, so you don't always have a relationship. Relationships are built over a period of time. But you don't have a relationship when you go, go for a commercial. Unless you know the person, but that's, you don't always know the person at all. There's hundreds of people waiting in the room to be heard. And sometimes based on your track record for maybe being on Broadway or being doing commercials, they see you. But sometimes you don't know them. Uh, most important, I tell everybody, be ready. Be ready. When you Look, actors are constantly out of work. But they don't sit on their laurels and do anything. They're still honing their skills. they got to be ready. That, that, that interview and the more people you know the better for you who knows you might be someplace you might meet a director and say hello my name is this and you know I'm interested in being in the theater and he says send me something you know but basically no you don't know everybody it's impossible Taylor uh yeah I have a um... Taylor hi Question is with all of your many great accomplishments, is there any other goals and aspirations in life that you would like to fulfill? Well, you know, I'm always aspiring. My goals always is to break a barrier. That's the fundamental for me is always breaking a barrier. And um, I want to do a book. People have said, well, why don't you have a book? It's all about timing. I didn't want to just do a book because everybody's doing a book. You know? Has to be the right time so my, my my goal is to do a book maybe i i will do more speaking well i, I do that but my goal something that i haven't done i haven't done a book yeah. i like your background too oh thank you <laughs> oh it's just on um, the bible verse of yeah. philippians 4 13. yeah <laughs> Yes, yes, thank you. I want to do a book. I want, I want, I want to, co I want to, I just have it in me just to give back. We've got to leave some sort of legacy. We've got to help our kids, everybody. We just can't, you know, there's so much to be done. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Maya? Hi, Vera. How are you? Hi, Maya. How are you? Um, I just had a question regarding your line. Um, so I was like on the website and checking it out and I noticed oh. that there weren't many like collaborations. Would that be something that you would be interested in doing one day? Collaborations. Period. In general, any skincare or beauty brand of your choice? I'm not sure what you prefer. Well, yeah. I organizations, not-for-profits, we look with influencers, 
you know, you're very kind of difficult to collaborate with another brand because in essence it is a competitor. Except out uh, well, we hope to right. do that. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know what I mean. Um, but uh, yes, I do a lot of stuff. I do a lot of teaching. I I do I do a lot of things with young ladies. As a matter of fact, I'll even share something else that I did. You know, I went to Rikers. I I went to Rikers Island prison and I did that purposely because I wanted to share. I had a program where the women that were going back into mass population come back out for six months. I wanted to let them know that that's why the erase is on the pencil. You know, don't worry about it. You can do it. And it just made my heart feel so warm when one of those ladies came by my store in Greenwich's Mall and said, hello there. Hello, Miss Moore. I didn't really remember, didn't you? Yes, I remember it. So there's so much that you can give back and collaborate with people. You know, phil, phil, uh, being a philanthropist is not all about money. It's about giving back and what you can do and help somebody. So I do a lot of that. The National Minority Business Council, the Women's Chamber of Commerce, the Harlem Business Alliance. I, I do a lot of things. Kids need more. These are young kids that, are, that have cancer. So I, I do a lot of things. It, makes, it gives me joy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Janet? Hi, I was just wondering, um, what advice would you give to your younger self when you were first starting out in your um, career? Oh, that's a great Well, I don't know. I, I just did so many things and what advice would I give to my younger self? You know what? I just I'm I guess I'm just an older version of what I, I I'm an older version of what I am before my younger self. I took risk. I take risk now. Or maybe somebody said, Well, you know, don't take such a big risk, but you know, but when you're young you do silly things, but I'm still taking risks. Maybe I would collaborate a little more. You know, because I really didn't know, but I did know. You know, when I wanted to know things, I went to score. I always did the research. You know, maybe now that you're older, you can dig deeper and learn more. But um, if you guys want to do things, I just want to tell you, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You can do it, all of you. You can do this. You just have to make up your mind. Remember I said earlier, it's really all about the mind. Don't Hang out with toxic people and say, no, you can't. Well, you know, I had to, I heard that when they said, Sarah, how are you gonna how are you gonna go to Green Acres Mall? What do you mean? That's a big mall. And another thing they said, you know, you know black people in that mall, Vera. How are you gonna get in there? They don't have small businesses in that mall. I know, but I shop there. I live in the neighborhood. So this is to say to you, no matter what you are, what color you are, what no matter what, this is across the board. If you make up in your mind that you want to do it, you can do it. And as you get older. Hopefully you mature, you learn more, how to do it better. But the desire never changes, I think. That's what you want to do. Did I answer your question? <laughs> I want to answer these questions, so if I don't answer your question, say, you know, tell me. <laughs> uh, Felicia? Hi. Um, Hi Felicia. So my question is, um, when I was looking like at the website and just researching in general, um, I, I noticed that um, your your product is basically like really high quality um, for like a um, affordable price. I was wondering if there was like difficulty in making it like more accessible to people and like if that um, the challenges that you face were um, very much worth it in the end. Okay, I didn't understand the last part of that question. I know you're saying it's a luxury product. How do I make it affordable? Uh -huh. Is that what you're asking? Like if there was any like challenges you faced in order to like have that like possible. Make it affordable and and good. Well, you know, you don't have to be so greedy. We're, we're talking candidly here now, right? They sit there where people can get it. I know you have to have your target market and you have your niche and your persona that you're catering to. But you can have a quality product and not cost $150. That's all I'm saying. You can't, I mean, I can't deal to the masses. I have to deal to my niche. But I think people can have quality products and not cost a fortune. 
I do believe that. Okay. Okay, thank you, Felicia. Any more questions? Oh yeah, I have one more question. Um, yeah. um, what was your most trying moment on your path to success and what kept you going? Mm, well, we discussed it, but I'll go in more detail. My most trying moment was dreading in Degree Acres Mall. Okay, yeah. We had never had a black tent in the history of that mall. Can you imagine? Yeah, I'm from I'm from Rosedale, so I know oh, all right, it's so right you, there. You live in Rosedale now? Oh, oh no, I live in Long Island now, but I'm from okay, Rosedale. Okay, but my point is this. All right, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. They were mm -hmm. black people, people of color in that mall. They just didn't, well, they just didn't have small businesses. They had major conglomerates in the anchor stores, like Macy's, Gimbel's, whatever. You know, they didn't have small businesses. So where did I get the audacity to think that I could go into Green Acres Mall and try to bring my product? We had been on Hillside Avenue for maybe four or five years because that's where we were testing it. People getting their hair done and we would make them up in the beauty parlor. Oh, this is nice. This is great. Then I don't have to go to Macy's. I can get my face done here. So I said, look, plan, got a plan. I said, you know what? We're going to build up a clientele and see how they like the product. And then so what happened was Green Acres was building a second floor. I said, well, listen, you know, you got to step out of your box and be innovative and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I mean, if they're going to say no, they're going to say no. But you can try. They might say yes. And if it's a struggle and it takes time, remember, it's a process. Nothing happens over. It took me three years to get into Green Acres Mall. I mortgaged my home to get into Green Acres Mall. And then when I got in there, they said, oh, there's no more stores. Hmm. OK, that's another story. And after that, they said, OK, we're going to put you on the second floor because I protested. I didn't say, OK, I can't be in the mall. OK, no, no, no. I waited three years to get in that mall. They promised me I'd get in that mall. They changed their mind. I didn't. And they put me on the second floor. Did I take it? Yes. Did I want it. No, I took it to break the barrier, to get traction, to get my foot in the door for future people to get into the mall. Someone has to be the trailblazer. Someone has to be the pathfinder. Right? That was the yeah. biggest challenge that I've ever had. Because I knew yeah. what I was dealing with. You know, you understand what I'm saying? I knew exactly yeah. what I was dealing with. Inequities. Not, you know, because that was a time where, you know, let's, let's be honest. You didn't have any black people. They didn't want to wait on black people. They didn't have products for black people. So there was inequities all around. Not only in the quality of the product, but do they want to service you? So th there was a lot of stuff behind that. And what kept me going is self-esteem part of it for black women. You know, they would come to me. We were talking about in the 80s. They would come to me and say, oh, Vera, they don't have a color for me. I'm too dark. I got a color for you. That's why I specifically targeted for the darker you. Oh, do you think my lips are too big? Or my behind is too big? Or this, my hair is too nappy? You understand? I'm talking candid now. If you don't want to hear this, don't ask me the question. Do you understand <laughs> what I'm saying to you? Mm -hmm. look, you don't, look, you ain't too far from it now, right? That's why we're fighting. Mm -hmm. So I let them know in the 80s, no, your hair ain't nappy. That's, that's beauty. Your lips are not too big. Sticking needles in their lips to make them bigger. Are they not? I'm not talking about everybody. I'm, 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 this is for everybody. So all the things that what beauty was perceived at then, you know, I knew you were beautiful all along. I knew I was beautiful all along. Oh, did I answer your question? Yes. That kept me going. That kept me going. Thank you for asking that, Ella. Ella, right? Yes, thank you for answering. Okay. Thank you. Deja. Deja, you have a question? Hi, Deja. <laughs> My question, I'm good. How are you? I'm great. So my question is, so what would you say to younger Black girls that are maybe nervous or intimidated to... Mm -hmm mark into such a big world okay 
happening to, you know, black girls and people of color, what would you, what advice would you give to them that are kind of looking to enter the big market? Okay, first of all, I'm going to just say, <laughs> Deja, you were born black, and you're going to die black. That answers your first question. Right? Okay, let's talk, let's talk, you know, I don't want, and then Judith said it was very fluffy. No, I'm telling it like it is. So number one, you got to get over that, if that's an issue. I'm not saying that is. So that's their problem, not your problem. Right? And, and get back to that mindset again. You have to decide. So listen, you think it wasn't big getting into Walgreens and Dwayne Reed nationally? That's huge. That's the, don't, see, don't let fear incarcerate you. You can't. I could say, oh my God, <gasps> what am I going to do? Maybe I shouldn't audition for another world. That's national television. That's NBC. No, I'm not going to try to integrate Green Acres Mall. They never had a black person in Green Acres Mall. This wasn't a rinky dinky mall. Ask Taylor. This was at the main mall in Queens. Gorgeous, prestigious. Never had a black tenant. Are you going to do that? Yes, I am. I shopped there. I'm going there. I'm going to try to get it. So you just have to do your due diligence, do your homework, build relationships, research, and whatever you want to do, you go ahead and do it. You can. You guys can. I mean, I, I told you. And I have to repeat this. My mother was a domestic worker. She scrubbed floors, not a mop, but on her knees. My father was a porter. Third grade education, my mother. My father learned how to read from reading the Bible. But we came from that, that foundation of faith that we can do. I was very rich with all the things that we needed to do to go forward. Not just merely survive, but to exceed. But you got to believe that. Am I preaching too much? <laughs> <laughs> did I answer you? Yes, you did. Thank you. Call me again if you want. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? Olivia. Yes, I was just wondering. Hello, Good. Um, I was just wondering if your acting career took any precedence into moving into the cosmetic industry. If, like, uh, people kind of viewed you as an actress girl and didn't take you seriously as a cosmetologist. No, no, the acting uh, helped me. It helped me with going into being an entrepreneur. You know why? Because there's so much rejection in acting. You know, you study for your audition, and you got to go on that Broadway stage, and it's beautiful, and they only let you sing four bars. You know anything about music? A bar. You know? Yeah, I used to do acting, too, in, like, the same all type right, of so, audition. All right. So, you, what were you a singer? What were you, an actor? Um, I was an actress. I did stuff, like, um, in different companies and things like that. When I was younger, not as much anymore. All right. So, you know, uh, the whole song, you say, ba 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 da 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 they say, thank you very much. Well, you're not what we're looking for. <laughs> and that, that's true. You don't even sing a whole line. It makes you feel like, oh, my God. So you have a pity party for just a minute, Olivia. Only 60 seconds. You move on. And it prepared me for rejection. You know? And in theater, it's rejection. And, and being an entrepreneur, like I just talked to uh, Deja. Rejection. It prepares you because you're strong. But I also had my faith. You know, I, I always fall back on my faith. You know, it makes you strong and you go for it. Don't let anything deter you. But it did make me strong because theater is not easy. Neither, neither is big business. But the things that you have to deal with are the same. Rejection, not what I'm looking for. Oh, you're too late. No, oh, it's closed. We can't get it. Whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying. No, it helped me a lot. Gave me more stamina, gave me more resilience. That's really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, and keep it up. I'm not saying quit your job if you have a job, guys. Let me make that clear. Be smart, 
hone your skills, keep your job, and support yourself while you're trying to do that. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Don't quit that job. Keep your job until you're ready. But not forever. you got to make up in your mind is, you know what? I can always get a job. You know, take it the mindset of creating jobs, not going to a job. Nothing wrong with having a job. Don't believe me. I'm not knocking jobs. But you know, there's something special about controlling your own destiny. You know what I'm saying? But you have to have that in it. You've got to have that has to be part of your DNA. Thank you so much. Thank you, Olivia. Shaina. Um I feel like everyone asked all the Hi. questions. How are you? I feel like everyone asked the questions, but I just wanted to say how important it is to have like people like you speak to our to students at FIT. Like this is oh, probably the first lecture I've ever had that has like fully impacted how I like view like oh. it's just like really important. Because like this school fails to talk about like the diverse like the issues with like diversity in these in these like environments mm -hmm. i don't know i just wanted to say thank you so much oh, wow <laughs> this school does or does not talk about diversity uh, like it doesn't and what, i didn't hear what you said judith does it for like two years mm -hmm. two years and this is like weary on touching on things like this so yeah thank you so much You've touched my heart because I know, I understand. And, and that's why when Judith asked me to speak, Professor Judith asked me to speak, I always want to be candid. I don't want to waste your time or my time. I don't, I'm not, I'm trying to leave an impact so you know that you can do it. I want to inspire that you can say, you know what? After talking to Miss Moore, you know what? I can do this. Don't be deterred whoever you are. You see, People's concept of who you are doesn't match what's popular in the magazine, but you know who you are. And we have to constantly break barriers. We know there's inequities, but those inequities can't deter us. Somebody has to do it. Somebody has to step up, stand up to the plate. And we all can do it. Come together as one. We all can do this. And it encouraged me to see different people marching together collectively. You know, red, yellow, black, or white. It encourages me. Because things have changed. And you you cannot ignore the fact that we have problems. Right. Communication is the key. Communication. You have to listen. When I first went on the soap opera, it was great for me, but I, we were the only black family then. I knew I wasn't invited to all the parties. Um, I knew some I was invited to, some I wasn't invited to. You know, I have pity party for 60 seconds. On the invite spot. Next. Learn your lines, go in and make your money. Economics. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Align yourself with people that think like you. Align yourself with people that care for you, that want to share with you. Leave the other ones alone until they get an awakening. So you stick, stay your course. I love what you asked me. Yeah. You're not alone. Find people that have the same desire and mindset as you. And all you ladies feel free. You can call me. Yes. Asia, did you have another question or Miles? Um, I just more so had a comment um for Vera. Um, yes. I really like your story and I don't know, it just really speaks to me because I'm always afraid to, I know rejection's a part of life, but I'm always afraid of, you know, getting rejected or my path isn't going to work for me. But like just hearing you talk really like inspires me and encourages me not to get deterred from what I wanna do. Oh, wow. You make me cry, I mess up my makeup. <laughs> Now, what is your path? What do you want to do? I want to work in the corporate world of the fashion industry. I want to do basically all of their marketing and things like that. But I know that when I look up corporate people, I don't see a lot of people that look like me. Huh? 
So that's that's one of my challenges. Of okay, all right, fine. Hmm? If somebody, know, has, somebody has to break it, and you can find somebody in the corporate world that looks like you, that went through that challenge, now she's a big deal at the corporate world. You gotta, do your, you gotta find them. You gotta find that person that you can identify with. You understand what I'm saying? There are many black women now, not a lot, but there's, it's not total void. Write them a note. Hey, you know what? This is what I'd like to be, and I just wanted to let you know I admire you. I saw you on Channel 4. You know, uh, matter of fact, I'll mention one lady, Carla Harris. My God. Have you ever heard of Carla Harris? Yeah, she's amazing. Oh, Carla Harris is a friend. She's amazing. Her too. Hear her story. Connect. We know you, We know the plight that all of us are going through. But you've got to get rid of that fear, teacher. Don't be afraid. The world is drowning. You know what I said? What did I say? You the world, said that. The world is browning. Do not be afraid. That's why when I make speaking engagement, I hope all these things that are going on, people realize the importance of coming together as a community to build your neighborhoods. Just everything. We have to come together, all of us. And I'm so glad to see all you young Beautiful students, no matter what, your backgrounds, the color of your skin, we're all human beings and we can work together. Surround yourself with positive people that will encourage you. And you see that you can do it. You know, you're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna be fantastic. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Deja. Yeah. Uh, Miles, you you have a question. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, once again, I, I do want to reiterate, though, I really do appreciate you talking to us. Um, and I, I I would argue, uh, and I don't want to speak for you, but I would argue that you're somebody that would definitely encourage us all to, you know, invest and to start uh, coming up with, like, business ideas, concepts, etc. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I guess I kind of, um, so I've invested about $2,000 in my own brand um, between, like, mm -hmm. camera equipment and uh, all that stuff. Uh, like, it's like a fashion oh. photography brand. Um, but with everything going on, uh, with the pandemic happening and everything, uh, and and yeah, obviously we, we know that there's going to be um, the presidential election that's coming up. Um, do you think that it is a good time to invest in yourself right now? I think it's the best time to invest in yourself because people that don't have your mindsets uh, are leaving. They don't realize that they can pivot and do something else. You know what I'm saying? And you got to go out there and get it. For example, I'll give you an example. You know, uh, as I said, Dwayne Reed, Walgreens closed 200 stores. That affected me tremendously. All right, I had a pity party with me myself, only for 60 minutes, 60 seconds. So we never really paid that much attention to our online. You know, we, re we were just trying to focus on that and really do what we're supposed to do with that. But, you know, once you have a brand and you you're aware and you've worked in and people know that you're honest and you can be trusted and miles you do feel so you have to do fantastic work people will follow you now i'm hoping that all those people that we sold to in the duane reed uh, walgreens stores will call us and order online and said because of the trust so i think this is a good time and a lot of people a lot of businesses are closing a lot of businesses are opening up because they see an opportunity where other people are closing so don't give up All right. Thank you. Hello, Sandra. Hi. Hello, Alexandra. Setbacks due to the pandemic, and if so, how are you overcoming them? Professionally, we've had lots of setbacks because, as I said, the store closed. You know, sales are down. But you have to have a, find a way to be innovative. You have to constantly stay on the cutting edge and come up with new ideas. You have to be innovative. That's where the marketing comes in. You've got to think, of how can I get that, that you know, without um, lowering your product. You have to be very strategic how you do it. Yeah. You know, but personally, thank God I haven't had any problems personally. But everybody's having a problem as far as business. Even the business, the supply chain was closed. You couldn't even get product. And a lot of people went out of business. So 
just have to be positive. You really do. You know, every once in a while, you just, I'm talking personal now. Every once in a while, I say, Lord, thank you. Just thank you for waking up. Help me. Give me some ideas. Give, you know, that's what, that's what I do. I try to stay, I always try to find the good, no matter what. I always try to find the good. You know? Because I've had many friends that, uh, you know, people have passed away. So, you know. Vera, can you share how you've, um, you know, with this, this pandemic, what did you do, you know, to reimagine or reinvent your brand? What did you do? I know you said you, you focused on your online. Are there other things that you're doing during this time to maintain those relationships with your customers? Well, yes, we, we, we online and we're trying to learn more how to do that, how to navigate online to get the customers, to hone in and find those specific customers. We're going to start doing some talking things online, you know, some seminars, some beauty tips. We're going to start being doing some makeovers to keep that connect, you know. So uh, those are the things that we're going to do online to stay in contact with our customers, continue to, to uh, grow the brand. And, you know, not all my customers, but many, many customers I called. Now, I wasn't calling for to see if they wanted to buy a lipstick. It wasn't about the lipstick. I was calling to see how they were. Mm. Just call and say, hello, you know, how are you feeling? I hope you're well. It wasn't a girl, did you want to buy my mascara? No, 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 it wasn't about that. And I, that was genuine because you care about your customers. You have to care about your customers, your bloodline. Mm -hmm. Right? But I'll tell you something. Oh, yeah, Vera, by the way, this is what I need. Ship it to me. So there's so many ways of engagement with your customer. The customer is key. You have to let your customer know that you sincerely care about them and that you're trying to address their pain and you feel this. That's important. That's what we try to do. Vera, did you do anything? I know, like, um, many designers pivoted and did masks. And a lot of cosmetic companies did sanitizers. Did you do anything like that also? No, we didn't do that, but we're thinking about it. We will do some masks. We'll do some sanitizers now. What we did do was we talked about the fact that you are wearing a mask. We did a campaign, the mask behind the mask. Now, the mask behind the mask was the M-A-S-Q-U-E, which is a product. You know, we, you can wear a, a plant mask or a camphor mask, a mask to keep your skin nice and hydrate your skin. It was a little play on words. So we did a very special on our product, the mask. Let them know, Preta gave it away. Take care of your skin behind the mask, with the mask. That was a little, yeah, and that worked well. That's so key because during this pandemic, many have lacked um, self-care. Oh. And, you know, really not not on the, on the table. So it's definitely so that. Nice. You know, we also do facials. Give me a call. We do facials. Uh, but I'm not, well, what I'm saying is I think it's so important to take care of your skin, to take care of your body, to take care of your hair. You know, getting to hair. All right, so we have a wig, we have a weave, we have whatever. You got to condition that hair. You got to, you know, take it off and condition it. You understand what I'm saying? For those that wear it. If you wear a mask, you've got to exfoliate, slough off those dead cells. You know, underneath that mask, you might be getting some pimples, some blackheads. You've got to take the time and take care of yourself. Because when you take care of yourself, you look good, you feel good. That's pretty simple. You know, because we won't be wearing that mask forever, hopefully. So we want to look good. So that's very, very important to take care of your skin, hydrate your skin, drink lots of water. Don't neglect yourself. That's right. Terry? Hi, hi, Vera. Hi, how do you pronounce that? Netari. 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 That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh -huh. My question is like, how did you transition in from being like a cosmetic owner into becoming like a motivational speaker and like working with different organizations? Oh wow! A segue. You know, cosmetics. I wanted to get into because there was such a void in the market for us people of color. Um, 
And I want to make it clear for everybody that's listening. I mean, I have a lipstick for people that are not of color, black, but I, I focused on where there was the void, where there was the whole, it, not even a void. We weren't even on the, we weren't even considered. So, and since I did that, I always wanted to, speaking, I always wanted to encourage people because I was always encouraged. I, you know, I have no sad story to tell you about a mom and a dad. I was very blessed. I had the best mother and father in the world. The best. And they all, even though we were poor, seven kids, five brothers, two girls. But they encouraged us. They always told us, you can do it. And they always spoke that into me. I guess then I spoke it into others, like I'm speaking today. Because I know if you believe in yourself, no matter where you live, I lived in Corona, which was a poor neighborhood, you can make it. You can excel. You know, you, you have a vision, have a goal, have a mission where you want to go. And you can go there. Thank you. Is that good, Netter Terry? Yeah, <laughs> necessary, yeah. Terry, I love it. Beautiful. Any <laughs> other questions? Emma, Brianna, Emily, Diana, you have another question? Yes. Um, I actually do. Um, when we were talking about how when I forgot who asked about how you were able to create products like luxury skincare products for a for a like good price for a reasonable mm -hmm. price, and then you responded because you like aren't greedy. And like, would you, why, why do you think that corporations jump into like these, like want these huge profit margins? Do you think it's because they want to target a certain kind of audience or are they just selfish in the sense where like they don't, they want to make as much money as possible? Well, we're a democracy democratic society we can do whatever we want it's up to you to make the choice right and not everybody it's just like going to the store dollars you go to another store the same dress might be 250. everybody's markup is not the same it's up for you to be intelligent enough mm -hmm. or if the product is worth it you buy it right so sometimes people say you know You know, and this is what I want to charge, and I feel this is a fair. I still want to give you quality because quality makes a repeat customer. Initial sales don't make a customer, don't make a client. So just charging a product, a price, just to, but you want that repeat customer that comes back. And then after you get that repeat customer and you have loyalty and support, I don't care what price you charge them. You understand what I'm saying? They believe in you. You know, I bought various this, and it cost, I'm just saying this, it cost a million dollars. I love it. It worked. I believe in her product. She has integrity. She's been around 40 years, and I have. I'm going to buy it because I know it works for me, and I trust her. It's all about the trust. Mm -hmm. And that, so, that also plays a role in, like, ethics, right? Yes, well, that's all part of it. You have to be ethical. You have to be honest. You have to care. Mindful of your customer. What do you what do you want to do? I honestly have no idea. That's okay. I'm thinking I want to go into green marketing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm thinking. I'm not entirely sure. But I really I really like that you answered. You answered saying that like you just weren't greedy. It's, well, it's greed. Yeah, well, you know, a lot of greed, you know. Yeah. The idea is I think that we're here for a purpose. We're here to share with each other and to help each other and to care about each other. The money will come. Oh, you'll get a lot of customers. What's the point of having one product you charge $500 for, right? But you only see that person one time. Yeah. Or you have products you, you feel you got to be fair. You got to cover your cost. But you have to be fair, and you'll get a loyalty, loyalty, ethics. They care about you. They trust you. They like you. They tell other people. It comes back. 
Thank you. You're going to be great. <laughs> Thank you. Just make up in your mind that you can. It's really a mindset. You make up in your mind that you can do whatever you want to do. No matter where you're from, no matter what you look like, no matter what. It's very important. We women are strong. Strong. <laughs> yeah, we can do it. We can do it. Thank you. I remember. I remember something that Eleanor Roosevelt said. I'm trying to remember. She <laughs> says, "Women are like tea bags in hot water; they get stronger." I mean, it's not verbatim, but in essence, stronger and stronger and stronger. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's like us. We get stronger, no matter the challenge, no matter the circumstances, and no matter the things that we're confronted with. <laughs> Do this. Don't worry, you can do it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Miles, you have you have your hand raised again. Yeah. Hi Miles. So I, uh, my dream job is, oh, sorry, also there's somebody doing maintenance at my house right now, but um, my oh, dream job, yeah. my dream job is a uh, supermodel. And so I ended up uh, taking my modeling career like really, really, really seriously this year. Um, and I ended up modeling uh, in New York City kind of more seriously for the first time. Um, but ultimately there was extremely taxing um like physical and mental elements like I lost 29 pounds and I, I, I like I kind of realized you know like as I'm doing it that I'm like almost falling in and out of love with it at the same exact time and also realizing that the beauty industry like as a whole like although there are many 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 um progressive movements that have occurred in the past 10 years uh, we we also, you know, would be, uh, I feel like a little naive to think that, you know, things are just going to change completely like overnight. Um, so would you, I don't know, I guess I'm really just looking for life advice, like, because uh, I'm, I'm definitely very conflicted right now. All right, so you're conflicted about whether or not you want to be a model? Um, yeah, because honestly, okay. like, I really, like, it's it's not a job to me. Like, I literally love it so much. But mm -hmm. I, it's it's really the mental strain that's more than anything. Miles, I understand perfectly whether it's modeling or whether it's being acting. You have to look away. You have to look a certain way. You got to lose that weight. You, know, you got to have that mental saying, oh, my God, I only can eat yogurt for five weeks. Or, no, I know the deal. We all go through that. But at some point, you'll make up in your mind, is it worth the sacrifice? Look at all these models. I mean, not, you know, that's why I'm so glad. Now, that's that's a trend. Maybe not. I hope it's not a trend. You know, and you love it, so if you love it, you, you'll still do it. You sacrifice the things that, because you got to look the part, Miles. Now that you told me you want to be a model, you know, this is a beauty industry. So it's up to you to make that decision. Right? Thank you. Vera, I noticed that you have some products for men on your website. Yes. Um, more for men, because a lot of men, you know, well, men, it's a big, it's a big business now for men, but I always wanted to cater to the men that said, oh, I, I, you know, I don't need a moisturizer. Well, you do need a moisturizer. Your face is oily, so we don't want to make you oily or greasy. We just want to make you supple and have moisture. So we have a liquid moisturizer. It's a moisturizer, but it's in the liquid form for men, just like water, but it's a moisturizer. You also have a scrub, which exfoliates dead cells. You want to slough off the dead cells. You have blackheads, whiteheads. You know, and now that men are taking care of their skin, men are wearing makeup, men are taking care of their skin, it's even more prevalent to take care of your skin. So we, we catered to men because I was in the theater too, you know, and men, and they want to look good. And they did take care of their skin. Look, models have to take care of their skin. You know, so we did do that. We, we included men. Good. Good. Wonderful. Wonderful. Any other questions? Anything else? Any other questions? I haven't heard from you. Jacqueline, you had some questions. You had a funny question, Jacqueline. Sorry, okay. it's just like my family's like really loud right now. So okay. I don't want to like, you know, ask a question and it's really loud. I don't know if you can really hear me good. Okay. Jacqueline, you want to quickly ask your funny question? 
Oh, well, my funny question. I'm into makeup, and I was thinking, like, if you do have a PR list, how can one get on it? If you do have one? Okay. So, so she that. wants to know what I'm doing things. She wants to hear about it. Is that what your question is? I have a PR list. Yes. Yes. Send me, send me what you do. Send me, send me something. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Talia, what about you, Talia? I think my questions are like all answered. Like everybody else's questions were basically very similar to mine. So I think I got the answers I needed. Yeah, that happens a lot. Great. That happens a lot. Sometimes when I have questions, I want to know things. You know, by the time I don't even get a chance to ask a question, which is fine because I like to listen because when you listen, you learn. You know, you learn something new when you listen. When you talk, you only say what you know. <laughs> So um, I hope I've answered a lot of questions for all of you. <laughs> Neil, did you want to, uh, did you have anything to share, Neil? I'm pretty much in the same boat as. Uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Vera, thank you so much. This has been oh, such a wonderful session. So inspiring, so encouraging, um, just, I love the way you just talked about relationships, have a plan, um, be ready. You emphasize be uh, on your skills and most of all, determination. Uh, Don't stop you. If, if, you know, if you keep hitting at it and keep going for it, it's eventually going to break through. Yeah. So, um, one, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. And I love talking to students, you know, and pe just people that are interested in scaling up, but it's me mentally, you know what I'm saying? To yeah. help themselves so they can help others, because that's the, that's the way we're all going to make it. We have to communicate, share, and be honest. Yeah. Be honest in your conversation. You know, have clarity when you talk. If you don't know anything, don't be afraid to ask. You know, there's no such thing as a dumb question. You know, don't be afraid to ask. And don't be afraid to go into uncharted waters. Don't be afraid to step out of the box. Don't be afraid. Because there are a lot yeah. of talented people out there. Definitely. So Vera, as, as you, do you have any um, projections for 2021? What are you looking at, Vera Moore Cosmetics? Oh, you know, based on what's going on, I'm trying to maintain what I have, really. <laughs> I gotta be careful, don't go too far. But, you know, eventually I hope to go, I'll get other distribution, of course. But right now, you know, with all the things that are going on, and I'm just trying to stay radically focused, stay focused and do what I do and do it better. Good. Yeah, Good. you can't be all over the place, I mean, unless you have deep pockets. No, you've right. got to be careful. And even those that have deep pockets, they're watching what you do. Right. You have to be very radically focused on what you're doing. Try to fill the need and the void that people need now because everybody's hurting. You know, yeah. um, and that's that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, what about in, in regard to, um, I know you said you're trying to fill a need now. Um, so, in regard to you, you said you're you're coming up to your you've been in business for forty years. Are you coming up to an anniversary or? Yes, <laughs> and my anniversary is next month. Matter of fact, I started um, in Green Acres Mall. I specifically see a, a a plan here. I go with a plan, Drew. I <laughs> wanted to open up before Thanksgiving, before Black Friday. So I said, we gotta get this place open. You know, Green Acres Mall. You know, even though I had a lot of problems, my goal was to open up just before the holiday, because I wanted to captivate that market. It's strategic, so that's what I do. And it's going to be an anniversary this month coming up, so we're excited. And, you know, we, as I said, you know, we just stretched our wings a little bit with our spa. 
you know, so we're excited about it. We're doing facials and wraps and exfoliating treatments. And I'm going to be doing some seminars too, you know, too. I think people want that because people are calling me all the time asking. I feel good when I can help someone. It really does. How are people doing with spas now that with the uh, pandemic? How are, how, are you, how are you handling that too? Well, we're doing great. You just have to obey and follow the rules. Social distancing, you know, take their temperature when they come and let them fill out the forms, you know. Um, and uh, it's not like there's a lot of people. Our bar is very, very small. It's very customized and professional, you know. But we don't, we don't have that. If people want, people want to relax. They want to just relax and pamper them, but they haven't had anything for a long, long time. Issues with it. Beauty parlors are flourishing, spas are flourishing, people still want their feet. People want a massage. People want especially the face because they've had that mask on for almost a year, nine eight months. Right. So if it's done properly and trust you where they're going, it's 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 okay. Good. Good. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, we really appreciate your time, oh, your great. input, your in inspiration, oh, and, uh, just uh, all around, just the, the, the solid wisdom that you've given us um, today in this class will take us um, so far, will resonate with us so that we can be better. And one thing that also stood um, stood out is that you know how so many doors um, could have been closed, you know, well, you can't because you're this or you weren't invited to the parties. And But the thing about it is that you knew who you were, you know, wow. you knew who you were. And I think that's so key, you know, knowing who you are and being comfortable in your own skin. Mm -hmm. And you, if nobody else is going to celebrate you, you celebrate, have your own party, you know. Yeah inspiration today i really we really appreciate your time and you know i'm i'm talking many years ago decades ago and we still have that issue now oh yes you know what i'm saying it's so important mm -hmm. we still have those issues now of confronting that demon of i'm not good enough right i, I can't go there because i don't know anybody that looks like me i'm not going to go to that meeting because i'm going to be the only one there so how do you break how do you break through that chain how do you do that you do you do it anyway. <laughs> well, before you can do it anyway, yes. People think they can't. Well, how, you know, how do I do? You say, look, I know I'm gonna be the only one there. Or maybe Judith will come with me, but we'll be the only two people there out of a thousand people. We walk in there with our head high, proud of who we are, standing in our own power, not apologizing for what the way we look. As I said. One black going to die black. What 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 are you gonna do? Be happy with what you have. And if this thing that's going on is only a trend of this inclusion and diversity, you still have to be who you are. Right. You know. So I think I think it's a wonderful opportunity for all of us to get together to love on each other more. And as we get to know each other, it's not that much different. It's not that much difference. We all want the same things. We want the same things for our family, the same things for our children, for our grandchildren. You know, we all want the same thing. So I think it's all about communicating, letting people know, you know, we're the human race. We're one. But you have to fight. You gotta fight. Determination. Definitely. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much, Vera. Thank you, Vera. Stay on. My students, they have some presentations. They did a little broadcast. Um, so you're welcome to stay and listen. We appreciate you so much. Again, thank you. Thank you, Judith. I have something at 4 o'clock, otherwise I would. Okay. Thanks a lot. We'll talk. Thank you. And have me back. Yes. <laughs> we'll and talk. I told him that you, and I told the students that you are looking for interns. So oh, definitely. Yes, I'm really I need you. <laughs> I hope they heard that. I need you. That was great, Judith. Thank you so much for inviting me. I really appreciate it.
Sarah. Thank you okay. so much. All right. Bye. Bye. I'll speak to you soon. Okay. All right, you guys. So, um, do you want to take a break? Does everyone want to take about a 10 minute break and we'll come back and do our presentations? Okay, let's take a 10 minute break and we'll come back, okay? We'll be back at about four o'clock. 